modern multiplayer shooters have a tendency to be, um, you know, modern. They also have a tendency to be complete doo-doo balls, but that's not the point. Whether it's a brand new shooter or a decade old one, the safest ground to cover is the modern era, as in like the stuff that's happening right now. These pretty much uh, always follow the same formula, you know, there's some angry ass Russian dudes, there's the Middle East, there's gas, but with this familiar theme also comes a feeling of sameness. Sure, the Modern Warfare reboot was good, and I'm sure the second one will be too, but you can't tell me that this don't look like this, and that that don't look like this, and that that don't look like that, and that this don't look like that. Which is fine, you know, I get it, sometimes something is good and you just want more of it, like uh, ice cream. But also like ice cream, it make it, it make me it make me it make me poop poop my pants when I have too much of it. So think think about that. Now I don't mean to sound like an old man Jenkins, you know, because I'm not. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a young man Jenkins. But there was a time, you know, a long time ago when multiplayer shooters were getting fucking weird. I don't know if TF2 was the cause of this exactly, but it's certainly a highlight of that era. It's one of those things that's so incomparable to another piece of media because it's just it's just so odd. It's a game about the 60s and there's a Australian people and there's fucking, I don't know. And listen, if you want realistic ass Tom Clancy fucking shooter with night vision and breaching and stuff, you're covered, all right? Actually, you're more than covered. You have a smorgasbord of Tom Clancy action game to play. But the space for unique multiplayer shooters is so, so thin and that's just, that's just sad. On the flip side though, some shooters get too wacky and the goalposts get moved around all over the place. Wanna know why this is so popular nowadays? It's because people are sick and tired of this. There's a beautiful middle ground in between tactical multiplayer shooters and goofy ones, and unfortunately that nuance is lost on about 90% of people who make games. Wanna play Overwatch? No. Wanna play Plants vs. Zombies Overwatch? I mean, um, still, no, I mean, no. I mean, no, I don't, I don't want to do that. Now, normally a big doomer slash big loser type of guy would just throw his hands up and say, dang it, damn it, this sucks, this all sucks. But I'm not that type of guy, you know what I'm saying? I understand there's a 20 year backlog of creative, fun, and interesting multiplayer shooters just waiting for you to pick one. This huge, giant list of games, how can you even pick one? How can you pick just one of these games out of this list? Fistful of Frags. It's a, uh, we're, we're just gonna talk about Fistle the Frags in this video. Oh, Santa Lucia! Fistful of Frags is unique. Yeah! Not because of some insane cosmetics or some wacky premise, it's unique because of how good of a middle ground it is between a goofy shooter and a modern one. And achieving that is truly something special. You probably saw this guy, I mean, uh, hold on, sorry, this guy, play it five years ago, and you stop thinking about it soon afterwards. But it's much more than just a game that Jerma played. It's, uh, it's a cowboy game. And, uh, and I love cowboy game. I can count the number of cool cowboy games on my hand, and if you remove the ones that don't have a fun multiplayer, then I can count them on my finger. Cause, uh, cause there's only one. And it's, and it's Fistful of Frags. I already know the dumbest guy of all time is going to bring up Red Dead Redemption 2's multiplayer, but come on, come on, you're not serious. Now come on, come on, this? Come on, this? Come on. Fistful of Frags stands out to me because it combines two of the things I love the most into one game. Cowboy game and Source Engine. Match made in heaven. Despite being a 15 year old mod for a 20 year old engine, Fistful of Frags is just as fresh as ever thanks to the current state of multiplayer shooters. It's easy to get lost down the rabbit hole of realistic reload animations, super in-depth gun customization, and hardcore boots on the ground gameplay, but I prefer my boots somewhere else. Most notably in this guy's face. In case you aren't familiar with Fistful of Frags gameplay, and you're confused as to what the hell I'm talking about, about how a cowboy game can be a mix of tactical and goofy, don't worry, it's uh, pretty simple. I mean, it's, it's kinda simple, okay? On paper, it's just a rootin' tootin' cowboy deathmatch, but the truth is the game has a very robust and very strange weapon handling system, which is one of the reasons I keep coming back to it. On your first game, shooting might feel random and inaccurate, but that's because it, uh, it is. If you don't learn how to do it properly. I don't have any cold hard numbers to back this claim up, but a fistful of frags weapon handling system, I think, penalizes you for movement even more than CS goes, which is crazy. I think this weapon skill gap is simultaneously one of the best features of Fistful of Frags and also one of the largest reasons it isn't as popular as it could be. New players come to the game, get absolutely pooped on, and never think about the game again. You have to have a specific freaked up mind to understand Fistful of Frags gameplay loop. 
One minute you're wrestling with the super punishing weapon mechanics, and the next you, you pick up a bench and kick it into a guy's head. Uh, this little tug of war might make some people sick, but to those of us with Fistful of Frag Brain, it just feels right. I want to talk to you about the Source Engine a little bit. It's the engine that powers Half-Life 2, Team Fortress 2, Counter-Strike Source, Apex Legends, and hey look, Fistful of Frags! For a game that wasn't even made by Valve, it's ironic that Fistful of Frags is one of the best uses of Source Engine mechanics in a multiplayer space. Half-Life 2 Deathmatch is fun, sure, but the game plays much too fast to make the gravity gun anything more than a gimmick. Launching a barrel at a guy at 250 mile per hour? It's okay, you know, it's alright. Uh, kicking the shit out of a guy with a barrel repeatedly? That's genius. I can sit here and talk about the specifics of the gameplay all day, but the bottom line is that it's fun and unique. There's so much variation in playstyle, which encourages you to explore and experiment to create a loadout that works best for you, allowing you to ooze your personality all over the map while you play. Also, uh, speaking of oozing personality, let's talk about the maps, and also the general art direction. Actually, uh, actually... Actually, I don't really, I don't really want to talk about the maps in the general art direction. Um, give me one second. I gotta, I gotta make, I gotta make a call real quick. Uh, hello. Hello. Hi. Oh, who, who is this? Hey, is this, uh, is this, uh, YouTuber Richter Overtime? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's me. I'm kind of in a, I'm in a public bathroom right now. Uh, what, what, what do you need? Oh, I was wondering if you could come over and talk about a uh, fistful of frags for, um, for this, for this video. I don't want to do it. Can you do it? Just full of frag, the cowboy game? Thanks so game? much, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Looking forward to your part oh, of the you video. Can go fuck yourself. Good evening. Fistful of Frags' as maps, and honestly the game as a whole, are carried by an incredibly distinct art style. At some times, it can look kinda bad. The character models in particular are very hit or miss. I find it really funny that the Breen reskin one has survived as long as it has, despite the game's many graphical revisions. The maps, however, are honestly some of the prettiest I've seen from a Source mod. There might be a few that fall behind in the detail department, but for the most part, these are impressive environments made by clearly talented devs, and they're packed with well-done custom assets which make them stick out to other Source mod levels. It's hard not to admire the work on display. One of my favorites is Cripple Creek. The visual style is somewhat comparable to the Outlands in Half-Life 2 Episode 2, but the running water you see throughout the map makes it feel very fresh and alive. The colorful trees help too. All in all, Fistful of Frags is, for better or for worse, one of the most unique looking source mods I know of. And while we're talking about visual style, I think it's inevitable that I address the game's similarities to Team Fortress 2. I wouldn't call Fistful of Frags goofy, not by a long shot, but it doesn't aim to reach the grit levels of modern shooters either. Its somewhat cartoonish style and its setting, that being the American Southwest prior to its hyper-urbanization, definitely does draw some parallels to everyone's favorite class-based shooter. Well, how serious can you make an FPS game about cowboys? Probably not very, but the devs seem to enjoy treading the line. They comb together unorthodox methods like FPS kicking with somewhat grounded weapons handling and unforgiving movement penalties. I think it's this combination of strange design choices and standout art design that has led the light bulb that is Fistful of Frags to shine maybe not the brightest compared to its source mod contemporaries, but certainly for an impressive length of time. Fistful of Frags is a, uh, uh, this is, this is Ratlobber, by the way. This is not Richter anymore. Richter, Richter's part is done. This is now, this is Ratlobber. Just so everyone's clear. Just so everyone's, just to get it, th just, just to get it out the way. Fistful of Frags is a remnant of a bygone era and also something to take note of going forward. One day, multiplayer shooters will be this fun again. Maybe it'll come with Source 2, maybe it won't. But whatever the case may be, Fistful of Frags remains one of my favorite games of all time and a reminder that you don't always have to choose between a tactical multiplayer shooter and a quirky open world game with crafting mechanics. You can actually make a game that is not like either of those things, uh, believe it or not. So thank you for watching. Thanks to Richter for helping out with this video. And thanks to this guy. Thanks to this guy named Shong Shuli. Thanks to him. He thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>